Crankshaft Position Sensor, Operation and Diagnosis by Austin Mulcahy. For this video, I will focus on GM Generation 3 engine crankshaft sensors. The bulk of these engines can be found in any 8-cylinder GM vehicle from 1998 to 2005, with some overlap due to in-between years. This three-wire sensor is arguably the most important input to engine operation and is located on the rear right-hand side of the engine block behind the starter motor. It can be accessed most efficiently by removing the starter, unplugging the electrical connector, and removing the mounting bolt that threads into the block. Service procedure documents for removal instructions also remind you to clean the area around the sensor before removing it. This will help avoid getting any dirt or material inside the engine. The job of the crankshaft position sensor is to tell the PCM where the crankshaft is in its rotation, which allows for proper RPM calculations, ignition timing, and fuel injector sequencing. A series of long and short notches on the reluctor wheel are all spaced 15 degrees apart. Through the Hall Effect sensor, this allows a digital signal to be transmitted to the PCM. Along with being an input for ignition and fuel timing, the sensor also monitors engine misfires. It can locate specific cylinders at fault or identify if the problem is working. All three wires come from the sensor directly to the PCM. A light green 12 volt reference and yellow and black low reference are supplied. The dark blue and white signal wire is read and interpreted as an input. This sensor is capable of setting numerous codes. It can set misfire codes for any specific or random cylinder and with the help of the PCM detect errors in its own circuits. These codes include range and performance faults, relearn required, and circuit malfunctions. Because the crank sensor is such an important component in engine operation, it can cause many performance and drivability issues if it fails. I will go over diagnostic steps to identify problems with this sensor with tools such as a digital multimeter, scan tool, and picoscope. The first diagnostic step is a visual inspection. You can look and feel around the sensor to check for poor connections, burnt, chafed, or open wires. The PCM connector in the engine bay is also a good place to check for obvious issues. Using a DVOM, checking sensor voltages is the best way to verify sensor operation. If you do not have correct voltage measurements in certain areas, it can point out faults such as opens, shorts, high resistance, or sensor and module failures. The first location to check voltage is the 12 volt reference circuit. You can check this with the key on engine off at two locations and should find positive 12 volts. These include PCM connector 1, pin 2, or pin C of the crank sensor connector. The best location is at the sensor because that will verify voltage at the component fastest. The next circuit to check is the low reference. This is the sensor's ground and should always be negative 12 volts. Again, check this with the key on, engine off, and use connector C1, pin 21 of the PCM, or crank sensor pin B. The last circuit to be checked is the signal, which can be hard to do with a DVOM. Using the voltage setting, you can start the vehicle and look at your measurements. At PCM connector C1, pin 12, or the crank sensor connector pin A, you should see around 6 volts because the sensor operates from 0 to 12 volts and you are watching the average. Another good check is to see if the circuit is shorted to power or ground. To check this, use the ohmmeter function and connect the circuit to ground and then power. Both measurements should read OL showing the circuit is isolated. Using a scan tool, you can quickly and easily verify the crank sensor's ability to input RPM to the PCM. In the first clip, you can see the engine speed PID displaying RPM and changing as the engine cranks. In the second clip, you can see no display or change, which means the circuit is not functioning properly. This is also slightly visible if looking at the tachometer, but much harder to confirm.
The last diagnostic method I will discuss is using a picoscope to graph the signal pattern. You will only need to use one channel set to DC volts with a 20 volt range. The best time division to use is 500 milliseconds because you can go back frames and zoom in to catch any fault as it occurs. You will want to make sure the sensor is switching on, on, on and off with a digital pattern from positive 12 volts to zero. Discrepancies in the waveform reveal sensor or wiring issues that can cause engine performance issues and DTCs. Images included are of a zoomed out graph, then zoomed in to closely examine the pattern. I have also included a graph of the crank signal in blue and the throttle position sensor in red. Here you can see that as the throttle is open to increase engine speed, the crank signal frequency becomes higher, telling the PCM that RPM is increasing. Although there are many ways to test a sensor, each of them have weaknesses. Using a DVOM, you can check sensor power and ground properly, but cannot see the signal waveform to diagnose if it is weak or out of range. Using a scan tool allows you to verify the sensor is functioning properly and the PCM is receiving the message, but it can still be misleading if the signal is skewed or intermittently failing. The scope is, in my opinion, the most functional way of confirming sensor operation, but GM does not provide written diagnostics for this test. Also, oscilloscope tools are very expensive. This concludes the operation and diagnosis of crankshaft position sensors, specifically on GM Generation 3 engines.